Hello! It's nice to be back. Uh, welcome to video number 10. This is gonna be my 10th video since I've been making videos that feature myself on the camera. And uh, we're gonna be talking about speakers today, most specifically the uh, Sony SS8150 speakers which I have right here next to me. So yeah, let's jump into it. So the plan for today is basically just me talking about these for uh, for a bit and then I'll be playing some music through them, well for one of them at the end so that you guys can kind of make out uh, the tone and uh, what it's like obviously it's not like being here but you know all about that so basically if you've watched any of my old videos so that's anything before 2018 you probably noticed that I have have a bit of a passion for uh, vintage audio gear so I've been having you know uh, anything from amps, uh, tape decks, you know, like uh, record players, a tuner, all that kind of old vintage stuff. Because I like the looks, I like the sound, I like, I think it's pretty self explanatory. So, obviously, I went through lots of speakers. I had probably hundreds of pairs, you know, throughout the years. And uh, I stopped uh, at these, basically. Now, honestly, they were on my dream list uh, of speakers. I found them one day on eBay and I said, Right, I'm gonna go for these because it's um, they are quite difficult to find because I, th I think the highest production number that I can th I can think about is 870 something. So that makes if they made a hundred piece, uh, sorry, if they made a thousand pieces, that makes up to what 500 pairs, and they came out in 75. You know, so that that was many years ago. Anyway, so what they've done here was three front radiators, um, you've got 6 dB worth of uh, attenuation here for your mid-level and, uh, and the tweeter. Um, this is the recommended levels up here. Uh, you have the base reflex port. This is, um, the duct is not that duct, that deep, I think it's just a couple of inches. The colors are actually quite nice and these, uh, the design of these, uh, of the mid-range and the tweeter and all these uh, silver, um, uh, lining up here that looks uh, pretty cool I think for uh, for its age anyway and at the back you've got a uh, 12 dB proactive second order uh, Butterworth uh, crossover network which is quite impressive the way they've built it obviously because it's doing all the phase line and, and it's taking care of uh, of all that and it doesn't mess the sound too much um, but I think one of the most impressive things apart from the uh, uh, from the enclosure which by the way weighs 55 kilos each <laughs> uh, is the is the woofer now as you can see here you've got this huge dust cap it's six inch in diameter for a reason that's because if you have a look at this red uh, at this uh, uh, the black ring here that is where the voice coil actually uh, 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 glues to the to the cone itself and this is quite cool because what they've done here is that they've they've put the magnets inside of the voice coil so it's one of those, you know, SVS and uh, uh, Dyn Audio kind of things, but obviously way before any of them were uh, founded. So yeah, because a lot of people actually believe that they've they came that they came up with these ideas. Well, they didn't. I'm not even sure if Sony did, but as you can see here, that was way before they were founded. So what they've done with the woofer, uh, with the paper, the actual paper uh, itself in the woofer and the mid range and the tweeter, it was that uh, they mixed carbon fibers in with them. Um, with the paper just to, so it was one of the ways to stiffen up the paper they went to the trouble of actually uh, experimenting with uh, uh, the fiber alignment inside the paper so that they can get the thing to actually be uh, properly stiff because as you can see here this and the tip of the uh, of the dust cap actually uh, is aligned pretty much perfectly aligned with the edge of the cone so essentially um, the voice coil is basically kind of pushing a V that's kind of a v-shape here you know what you've got is a proper balance because they, they went kaboom about balancing uh properly balancing the weight of the cone so as it sits on the voice coil and the weight of the voice coil which is by the way is a uh, edge one one um so that the inertia of the voice coil and the the ends of this uh of the cone here is pretty well they got it as close as they could so now, as far as uh, the magnetic system uh, goes, the motor magnets, 
they've obviously the, the the magnets are inside of the voice coil, so they've decided to ditch the whole uh, traditional uh, center pole thing. What they've done was to increase the area on which the voice coil um, actually interacts with the magnetic uh, with the motor magnet, and because there's more area, they said that there's more control over the cone. So that means that there's more control over the frequencies coming out of it. So what they've done instead was to obviously have the voice coil actually fit perfectly inside of the magnetic gap between the, the magnet ends and the um, guides, which are which they have used. And by the way, they've used copper because they were fully aware of hysteresis. So that that's there's nothing new about that. That's that's been going on for for many years. They knew about it, and they've they've done what they could to get rid of it, and it's working. Um, this is not high excursion. Because the, the, this enclosure was actually supposed to be an, uh, uh, a sealed one, so that you have an uh, um, air spring behind it, so that keeps the woofer. But these um, these woofers actually do not need that, because honestly, they've been designed to do low excursion and have a ported uh, option instead. And um, speaking of the enclosures, what they've done with the port was that they tuned well, they've tuned the box in such way that. Uh, essentially, because since this is so tw so uh, stiff, you can have it cross over at a higher frequency. So they've crossed this over. Uh, if I haven't mentioned, they've crossed this over at 1k uh, and the mid range at at, um, uh, at 7k. So you've got um, a, a band pass filter between uh, 1k and, and 7k here. You've got a uh, high pass up here uh, above 7k and obviously low pass before uh, below 1k here. And so what they've done is that they've tuned this, um, I, and I don't know how they've done, I, th I mean, I'm hoping it's intentional, but anyway, what happened was, with this tuning specifically, the Helmholtz uh, uh, resonance of this, of this cabinet is actually, it mixes in with the vocal in such a way that it kind of sounds um, organic, you know, it's quite amazing. And by the way, if you know the Sony, the old Sony G series uh, speakers, they... Uh, essentially cover that they're basically these led to the to the G series pretty much because what happens was uh, back in 75 Sony said that they really want to get onto the market on the speaker market well 74 and uh, they said right we're gonna sit there and build this proper uh, you know reference level you know proper high-end speaker just to show that we can do it and so they, they built these, basically. So essentially you're looking at a piece of history here, honestly. Well, I think that pretty much covers what I've been trying to say in this video uh, and why I think these are way ahead of their time. What I'm gonna do next is I'm probably just gonna play some uh, some music through uh, through them so that you can hear uh, the tone, what the tone is like. I'll try to find something that kind of in, uh, use, makes use of that uh, of that resonance. I'm hoping I can find one. Yeah, so this is pretty much it. Uh, enjoy the music and uh, thanks for watching again. And uh, I'll see you when I see you next. Bye bye.